Hello. In this video we're going to take a deeper look at the new document library and the tiles view that has been shipped with the new document library in 2016. This is a follow-on video to the other three parts that touched on quite a lot of the features um, throughout the new document library. Currently on my screen we have the new tiled view now to change from the list view to the tiled view we just select this option switch back to list just select this option again and switch back to the tiled view now the tiled view gives you a nice visual interface what's interesting is these were the two folders that we created and these are the documents now if you left click on a document, what's going to happen is it's going to open that document. Uh, in this scenario, it's going to open it online because that's how it's set up. But if you have set it up to open in the desktop client, then that's what's going to happen. Then that can be slightly annoying because every time you click on these, uh, do certainly documents, they will continuous to continually open. So you need to bear that in mind. Great for end users, maybe not great for power users and administrators, particularly when you're you're trying to, to select a particular document. If I click on a folder what happens is it draws me down to the next level and I see the documents in that folder which is quite neat. If I do select a document the information panel here is available and is very rich. We get a preview of the document, we get the properties that we can edit by selecting this link or we can directly edit here in this panel which again is a nice update we get an activity feed of everything that has happened to this document that tells us that's a nice update and I'm sure this will expand continues to be developed we have this share option if you select email everyone what will happen is it will open your email client and then allow you to send out an email the other option that you've got is to add people or select people that SharePoint currently knows about, i.e. people that are inside the farm, um, and share this document with those people. And at the bottom here we have an information panel just telling us a little bit of basic information about that document, such as its type as an example. One of the new features is this pin to top. Now notice if I unselect the document, we don't get the pin to top option. You need to select the document in order for the pin to top option to be available. If I left click the pin to top, what happens is that document gets pinned to the top here. If I now select this document, the option here is unpin. Now this is what users are going to see when they first come to the do to the document library so it's quite good that your more, more important documents are pinned to the top. Now let's see what happens if I pin a second document. If I select this document I get pinned to top and I can, I can now pin a second document here. If I select a third document I can now pin to top a third document. So we now have three documents pinned. If I don't want this document here and I feel that this is more important, what I can do is I can select it and now I have a new set of options called Edit Pin. If I click on that drop down here I can move it to the left. So if I move that to the left, we now get that document in the middle. If I now select the drop down option, what I get is move to left and move to right. I have the option to move it to the right and bring it into the more prominent position here. If I've decided that this document has run its course and is no longer required, I can use this drop down option and unpin that document, removing it from that level. And this is just a new, very nice feature for highlighting top documents um, to users as they come and visit document libraries.